Did you know that there are three separate places where you can adjust your plugins and your effects here in GarageBand iOS? Well, it's true, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to access all three and how to make them work together to get your best possible sound. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. Now, if you're new around here, I have brand new videos every week. So if you subscribe to the channel, you'll be kept up to date with all the new content that's gonna help you create some better music. And now today, we're gonna to be creating music using GarageBand here on the iPhone or the iPad. And I'm gonna show you how we can actually adjust our settings of our plugins and our effects in the three different places. So let's jump in to GarageBand now and take a look. Here we are in GarageBand on my iPhone, though it'll look very similar if you are on the iPad. Now, the first way to adjust our plugins and our effects is to tap on the actual instrument. So in an audio recorder track, we tap on the microphone icon, and you'll see here, this is our basic plugins and effects layout. So we can adjust our plugins and effects right on here if we wanna just get some basic settings to dial in to get our sound sounding good at the very initial part of recording. But then, we can dive in and we have a whole bunch more settings. So how do we get to those? Well, we tap on our mixer icon here, and now you'll notice down the side to the left here, we have some more. We can adjust the compressor here, our bass, our treble, and our master effects. So that's number two place that we have to change our plugins and effects. And then we can tap on the arrow next to plugins and EQ, and here we have the same plugins yet again. We have our compressor, we have our effects, we have our EQ. So why do we have all three of these and how do they work together? That's what we're gonna jump into and take a look at now. But before we do that, a quick heads up that this is for our audio recorder tracks only. So you can see here that with our audio recorder tracks, they have the microphone icon we can tap on and we get this view. However, if we come back to our main screen here, if we tap on our drums or a virtual instrument, then we can tap on the actual instrument. And yes, there are some settings that we can adjust here and they are dependent on the instrument, but you won't have that initial screen with your microphone settings. You can, however, come in to your mixer icon and you have your compressor, your treble and your bass and you can come into plugins and EQ and adjust those there. So the first method is only for our audio recorders. The second and third method is for all of our tracks. So let's jump in now and take a look at how these settings work. Now I'm not going to do any of the actual mixing or the effects processing here because I've got a heap of videos where I show you how to do that. I just wanted to show you how these work so that when you're playing with them you know how they interact with each other. So we're going to first of all tap on the microphone icon here and now this is our quick way to dial in any of our settings, but these are actually based on whatever preset we have on our vocal or our audio recorder track. And I'll show you what I mean. If we tap in the top left here, the moment we've got punchy presence. So these are our shortcuts to some of the effects that we have as part of punchy presence. Let's tap on this one and change it up. If we make this lead vocals, what you'll see is that we now have different controls. We have our pitch control here, we have a tone here, we have our drive control. So they are actually related to what we're gonna show you now, which is what is actually in the mixer with which plugins are actually on by default for that particular preset. So let's now hit the mixer icon in the top left corner here, and we can come in and have a look at our compressor and our treble and our bass. Now with our compressor, it's gonna be a little bit hard to see here because it's over on the other screen, but let's turn our compressor all the way up here. Now if we tap back over here, you can see this compressor knob has gone all the way up, and let's dial it down here to almost nothing, go back to our mixer here, and our compressor is down. So yes, these are actually aligned with each other. Whatever we set here will actually be set back on our compressor here. Now our treble and our bass is going to do the same but for our visual EQ. So let's show you here. Let's boost the treble up to the top here and our bass down to the bottom. If we now tap on plugins and EQ and tap on our visual EQ down the bottom here, look at that. It has adjusted our treble and our bass on our visual EQ. If we want more finite control, we can come in here and play with these. And now if we come back out of there and go back to our uh, plugins here, our plugins and EQ, then there you go. The treble and bass has adjusted so there's a direct relationship between the things we have on our front screen here what we have on this screen here and then what we actually have in here which is what we're going to jump in and talk about now 
Okay, so we've showed our front screen here. We've showed our secondary settings here with our compressor and our treble and our bass. Now let's take a look at the actual plugins and EQ layout here. So you can see here we've got all of our plugins with the blue lights on, other ones that are on there. Now these actually relate for the most part to what we have over here. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's come into plugins and EQ. And if I tap on this effect EQ blue light, look what happens to our tone knob on the right. It goes off. I can do the same for enhanced tuning. It goes off there. Same for overdrive. So these are actually controlling what we have over here. So if I turn this on, we'll just do that again and drop this down. Let's change this overdrive knob on the right. And you can see that it's actually affecting the settings we have over on the left. We can do the same thing. Let's drive it down on the left and you can see that it's actually affecting the settings on the right. So these on our front screen here are just a shortcut, a short version of the more detailed version that we have in our plugins and EQ over here. The same with our compressor. Let's just turn everything off here and then come back to our screen and you can see that everything is off there. We can turn these, and as soon as we start turning the dials again, we come back here, and we'll notice that these are now back on. So yes, it'll change. So if we delete some of these, let's just go edit, and let's just say we wanna get rid of a couple of these plugins here, and then they have disappeared from that screen. But what happens if we come in here and we edit and we add in a new plugin? So let's just throw a chorus effect on here. Well. Yeah, it doesn't actually update over here. So this only uses this section for our defaults for our presets. And as soon as we start customizing, then we have to come in here to do our custom assignment of our plugins and our EQ and our effects. So just, just something to keep in mind that the, the relationship between this one here and this one here is these are a simple version of the more complex options that you get if you come in here and adjust your settings over in this section. And now before we finish up here, you might be asking a very valid question, which is why on earth do we have three different places to adjust these? Well, this is a throwback to the older versions of GarageBand. So originally we had very little in the way of EQ effects plugins here. Uh, in around version 2.1, we got this here where we had a single compressor and we had our treble and our bass, very basic EQ and compression controls. In a later version, they added in the plugins and EQ. So we had all of these presets that we have over in this section and we had all of the ability to come in here and add and remove and tweak our plugins so what's happened over time is that we've now got these three different locations because it has been left behind from when we had old versions so until GarageBand gets a complete overhaul then we're going to be stuck with this but hopefully now that you know how these three different ways of adjusting our plugins and effects work together it's going to make it a lot easier for you to be creating and mixing your tracks. And there you go, not the greatest interface in the world, but once you know how these three different ways work together, you're gonna to be able to use your plugins and your effects a lot more effectively. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. We've got two more videos linked right down below if you'd like to check out even more tips about how to create your best music. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.